So welcome back to the channel. I'm Sunny and this is Cheat Code Tuesdays. And for this cheat code, I'll show you how to import resources into your existing Terraform code. So let's get started. So if you're familiar with the Terraform CLI, you may or may not be aware that there is an import option. It basically allows you to import resources and manage them through Terraform code. So I'll just read to you what it says on the HashiCorp website. Terraform is able to import existing infrastructure. This allows you to take resources you've created by some other means and bring it under Terraform management. There is a few gotchas. Um, the, the main one that I'm aware of is, it says the current implementation of Terraform import can only import resources into the state. It does not generate configuration. So that means you need to write the configuration before you import a resource, which is what we're gonna to do today. So let's get straight into the demo. So what I've gone and done is I have deployed uh, a management uh, resource group through code and that's just a key vault uh, a vnet with a subnet and just a storage account and then what I've gone and done is I've got a legacy RG and if you if you see here I've actually gone and um, created these via the portal so you can see naming standards don't really align if you look at my terraform state here so if I just do a TF state list you'll see that I will have all the resources that I've just shown you from the management point of view and that legacy uh, virtual machine. So there's no virtual machine objects or anything here. So what you need to do is when you're importing resources, you pretty much need to reverse engineer uh, the infrastructure and deploy based on dependencies. So obviously I can't deploy a virtual machine or import one without an RG. Uh, the network interfaces would need to go first and then the virtual machine itself. So we're gonna import the resource group. So we're just gonna create a new file here. We'll just call it uh, legacy.tf. Uh, so what we need to do is import the resource. So uh, I've basically gone and created a, a new uh, resource group and just given it a name. And then I just need to make sure that the location and the name match the existing infrastructure. So if we go here, so you can see there, I've already gone and done that. And then obviously I know it's, uh, it's in West US. So what we need to do now is we basically in import this. So if you just do a TF uh, import, and then you declare the resource type and then the resource name. And then what you need to do is pass through the resource ID itself. Uh, sorry, I've got an AZ mask thing in my Chrome extension, but if you do that, that will import the RG. So now I have this RG in my state file. So uh, if I did a plan, you'll see that it'll say there's no no changes to the infrastructure. Um, so so that that resource group is now managed through Terraform. Yep. So you can see there's no changes. If I do a TF uh, state list you see that there will be this legacy RG now. So what we're gonna do next is um, reverse engineer the virtual machine. So we're gonna do the public interface, network interface, then the virtual machine. Um, so I've already gone and done this ahead of time. So if you see here, I've gone and declared a uh, public IP and then just given it a name, um, which I did wrong originally. So we'll just call it legacy public one. And this is a name, so uh, if you go have a look, at the resources and the public IP. So I've already got this name here. So obviously uh, naming standards and things like that uh, won't align. So renaming objects are not so straightforward because if you rename a virtual machine, um, the result of that potentially is to destroy and redeploy. So you need to be mindful of when you're importing things into state that you should always do a plan to see what the code will do. Um, so you can see here, if I left this and I did a TF plan, you'll see that it's going to try and deploy this um, public uh, interface. Okay, so you can see that it's going to deploy a new public interface, all right? So I'm, I'm going to import this public interface into the RG above here. So it, it's already in there. So I'm going to basically just um, align it to the code or the code to align with the resources. So we're just going to import this. So we're going to put the public interface in. And then we go and grab the resource ID and that's it. So that will go and import the public interface and match this code up. So if I do a TF plan, sometimes you may get discrepancies with what the infrastructure is and what the code will do. So you have to refactor your code to align. I would recommend if you're going to do this, obviously in production to test it out thoroughly in dev because you don't know what the result will be generally. 
um, an in-place update is okay, um, but obviously you need to sort of use a bit of common sense on, on what's okay, what's not, such as changing a password and whatever else. Um, but if there's a destroy, you should probably try and align the code so there's no destroy. Um, so if I go and do the next part, which is the network interface. So again, I've already done this ahead of time. I'm creating a new uh, network interface now. And obviously you can see here, um, it's gonna associate to this uh, public IP address. So I just um, updated that. And the subnet is pointing back to the management subnet. Obviously all the code is all in one um, folder. So it knows about the subnet I've deployed in the management layer. Now, obviously, um, this is just for demo purposes, so um, it's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, you just need to make sure that um, that the code that you're you're writing, I guess, is aware of other resources that you're trying to consume. Um, so, if you look at here, look at this. I've also already done this, so I'll just show you. So, this is the network interface. So you can see I've I've gone and changed the name as a static value here. And then I've gone and there's an IP config part which actually has a name as well. So that's just IP config one. So we're gonna import uh, this now into state. Um, I think that's my fan I can hear from my PC. That's fantastic. Okay, so if we just re so we're just gonna now import this part. Okay, so that's now imported. So the next part now is the virtual machine. So I've already gone and hit ahead and done this again. So I'm just gonna rename this. Um, so basically just declaring a new Windows virtual machine and then I just give it a reference, uh, a name, and then the name itself has to be the resource name itself in Azure. So I've already gone and done that. So you can see here. Um, yep, so Let's go back to that. And then what I've gone and done is um, populated it to use the same legacy RG that I imported originally. I need to change the network interface to the right name, so it lines. So, so that's gonna basically consume that network interface which also has that public interface associated. Uh, it's got a password that's been generated in my management um, side of things, so you can see here. I've got a random password. So this is uh, previous code if you're familiar with um, my other videos. Uh, and I basically have a key vault here where I store that pass to that secret. Um, so I'm gonna consume that and I'm gonna replace the password. And then I've got some basic config. Obviously everything needs to align. So size needs to align and obviously um, OS and any other config. So I'll just go ahead and import this. So if I just go TF import, and then the resource, and then the resource name I've given it. And again, you just need the resource ID. So if we just grab this resource ID. And then what we'll do is we'll do a plan and we'll see what the end result is. Um, it's, it, it's obviously not as straightforward as this at times. If you've got modules and anything else and any other underlying dependencies, it's gonna get a bit trickier um, depends how complicated your modules are um, having resources is, is obviously a lot more simpler um, so you can see here uh, I've just got a whole uh, you can see it's got an in-place update which is just going to be the admin password so we knew that um, the the admin username or password is actually a mandatory attribute and then it's just going to add a whole bunch of blank values um, so it looks like these are just default values so we just we'll just go tf Auto approve, sorry. So, so obviously this is just a demo, so I'm kind of just blitzing through it. Obviously you take a bit more time to validate what is actually going to happen um, and test it out. Uh, you know, you should also take a, a backup of your state, take a backup of your virtual machine and everything else. But we're just gonna go through and apply this. Now, I think the virtual machine is off, so. Um, but you can see there it says one's changed. Um, so if you just go and look at the state file again, uh, you should see I've got a whole bunch of legacy infrastructure. So there you go, another one. And then I've got the, should have the legacy virtual machine. So that's basically it. So what we'll do is um, just for an example, uh, I'll just add a tag. Uh, and if we just call it environment. Uh, uh, 
uh, and we'll just call it uh, dev. So let me let me apply this because you can see here it's going to add the tag. So we'll do an apply. So this will show that um, Terraform is now managing this virtual machine, and I can actually add um, attributes to it now, such as a tag. So just go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's done. So let's go have a look at the portal now. So let's refresh this. Should have a tag. There you go. So it's got a tag, so it's managed by Terraform now. So that's basically it. So I thought I'd do a quick video. Um, obviously, if you're going to do that in a real world environment, you should take some time um, to test it out and validate it in dev as well as use the plans uh, to sort of guide you, I guess, on the attributes you need to modify. You need to align the code. Obviously, it's not going to meet um, your normal naming conventions and things like that. So you might need to use static values um, because you know they're potentially migrated environments. So Cheat Code Tuesdays, every Tuesday, and I'm signing out. See ya.